Hello everybody, my name is Judy and I work at Sproulston Library. Um, the book I'd like to recommend to you today is Return to the Secret Garden by Holly Webb. It's a sequel, which means it's a follow-on to the classic book The Secret Garden by Francis Hodgson Burnett. Um, I'm sure many of you have already read that and enjoyed it. If you haven't read that book, I think you would still enjoy Holly's book, but I think you would get a little bit more out of it if you read the original first. You can get both books by downloading the Libby app onto a smartphone or tablet and signing in with your library card number. Um, it's really easy to do and you can get more information about this if you look on the library website. If you prefer to listen to a story, there is an audio version of The Secret Garden available on the Libby app. So Holly Webb has set her sequel at the beginning of the Second World War and it centres around a group of orphans who are evacuated from London to Misselwaite Hall, which is on the edge of the Yorkshire Moors. It's written in a completely different style to the first book and I think it's probably a little bit easier to read but it does cover the same things of being abandoned and feeling lonely and the joy of nature and wildlife and all that that can offer. Like the first book, it has a magical feel to it, but it's also a little bit scary in places with descriptions of strange cries in the middle of the night and dark shadows and howling winds. Um, I read the book whilst I was sitting outside in my garden, which really added to the pleasure of the book as I was surrounded by greenery and the sway of the trees and the sounds of birdsong in the background. Um, a lot of Holly Webb's books are about animals and I'm sure if you enjoyed those books you will like de the descriptions of Lucy the Cat in this story. After having read this book I thought it would be fun to create my own secret garden. So I decided to create it out of something very ordinary, an egg box. And what I did, I first of all painted the lid of the box blue and then I sat, stuck some cotton wool clouds on and um, I don't know if you can see it very well but I went on the internet and found a picture of a robin flying which I printed off cut out and then I used some invisible thread poked it through the lid of the um, box hopefully to make it look like the robin flying in the secret garden I then painted the bottom of the box, the egg box green, and I coloured in the sticky up bits of the egg box with a brown felt tip to make the tree trunks. I then got some paper and cut out the canopy of the trees and I got some twigs and stuck them on. When you stick them onto your egg box, just stick them just below the top of the sticky out bits otherwise when you close your lid um, it won't close properly if you stuck them too high. Now I don't know if you can see I've also cut out some flowers um, I've got some fir cones that I've stuck in and also some other little stones so that's my secret garden. I'm sure that you can come up with some really imaginative ideas for your own also the book made me think how lovely it is to keep a diary and I think it would be a very interesting project for you to do if you have started already or if you were to start a diary about life in the past few months during this extraordinary time of the coronavirus and then maybe you can look back at it in a few years time and remember what it was like and it's also, I think, important to share this time with future generations. Look out for the film version of The Secret Garden, which is due to be released in August, but it may be delayed again due to the coronavirus. 
If you have signed up for the Summer Reading Challenge, then both The Secret Garden and Return to the Secret Garden will both count towards your challenge. Good luck with that and hope to see you back in the library very soon.